Welcome to all the speakers and everyone watching Nari Talks' first webinar of 2021. Our next speaker, Parimala Kulkarniji, has been in the legal profession for the last 22 years. She has practiced law in High Courts of Nagpur for seven years and has also worked in Godesh Properties Limited as litigation head. She's currently working with the Vadia Group as vice president in the legal department. Welcome, Parimala ji. Thank you for being here today. Thank you so much for having me on the panel. It's a pleasure. Thank you. We have the law of adoption and guardianship, which is in direct contradiction to the constitutional provision that accords this gender equality under Article 14 and Article 15. You know, talking about that particular law, I would like to invite um, Parimala ji to actually talk a little bit about what this law is all about. What are the what this law is in terms of adoption and guardianship in India, and if these laws are actually gender neutral or not, and how the journey of this law has been towards achieving gender neutrality. See, the fundamental uh, issue is how the law got formed since beginning. So it had a very rooted, you know, deep-rooted impact because of the social structuring, patriarchal structuring, then economic rights, you know, financial independence, which has now come to women. And uh, the uh, women being lesser human beings as against the men. This has gradually been addressed in our society. And I, I feel very happy about it. The race was never, you know, to become equal to men because we are born equal. That is what the nature has bestowed upon us. So that right we don't need to claim. What we need to claim is with that, whatever responsibility today we are shouldering equally with that of men. So when responsibilities are put, when competencies cannot be challenged, when by the act of God itself we have been created equal, Therefore, when it comes to rights, why should women be put on the second pedestal? That is the very question we need to ask. And as uh, Shanta Madam has rightly pointed out, it is economic independence, economic rights, which basically get transformed into all the rights and responsibilities which come to men and women equally. So that has been asserted by judiciary, uh, it, uh, be it uh, law of maintenance, be it law of marriage, be it law of succession. And then when all these get transformed, now when it comes to guardianship and adoption, which is again a very big responsibility of person's shoulders, there whether there can be any discrimination, as far as women's right to her own child is concerned. Now, be that child adoptive, be that child natural, or be that child, you know, a stepchild. So everywhere it is, the both the parents are referred as parents. So why when you refer them as natural guardians, a woman should be on the second pedestal? That is the question. Again, the question is, your laws are framed in 1956 and today after 75 years also, the laws cannot be in the same form because in every way we, the society has advanced, the entire social structure has changed, economic structure has changed and the very thought has to be moved, this iceberg has to be moved. And therefore, it is very important that laws also change. The guardian, Minority and Guardianship Act, Section 6, still remains to be the same. That father is the natural guardian. In the absence of when father is not there, then only mother can be a natural guardian. That law still prevails. Still today, it is the same. But judiciary has stepped in. And the Supreme Court has very categorically said that whoever is shouldering the responsibility, if the father has abandoned his responsibility, 
you cannot assert your own right to be a guardian it has to go to woman mother anyways mother has always been looked at, looked as a better caregiver so as far as as a mother natural guardian of course she is as a as a guardian also legal guardian she always can perform her duties and always can claim this position that shouldn't be in avoidance of the father it should anyways be there equal to the father the basic fundamental logic and the principle go is deep rooted in section 30 13 of this minority and guardianship act the entire law the basis is paramount consideration is minors welfare if that paramount consideration is not addressed no right anyone can assert that's very clear so the entire law of minority and guardianship is fundamentally based on this principle that minors welfare is the paramount consideration it's not you can assert your rights by putting the minor into any job party it's only that thing which will have to be considered and then the court will decide whether it is father or the mother who can be a guardian of course both having been equal partners in marriage they equal partners in economic social in every respect in the society the women's right natural guardian cannot be put on the second pedestal similarly law of adoption now it has also traveled a long way wherein single women specifically they were it the they were considered not to be capable of uh, taking care of a child on their own again social structure patriarchal uh, concept of society women being vulnerable not strong enough to take care of somebody on their own these concepts are becoming bygone now and therefore the law also is progressive whereby the supreme court is recognizing these rights wherein unwed wife uh, as sorry unwed women single women can also adopt equally so this is the fundamental basis of both these laws law of adoption as well as law of minority and guardianship of which uh, uh, we will uh, address the few issues further um, the basic which has to be uh, understood when we understand these laws are there are only two aspects to this whether the person is capable of adopting and becoming a parent whether the person is in a position to act as a natural and legal guardian so that is what has to be understood and addressed that has to be understood with reference to whoever has to be a minor in this case child or even an adult who requires a guardian it should be in their paramount interest that is the only guiding factor which supreme court has time and again been asserting thank you thank you very much ji and um, while definitely you know the supreme court has been taking action towards this particular law and we are seeing amendments come in as you rightly said it has taken us 75 years to come to this law considering that you know we are involving the life of minors and their future is at stake here um so it's actually i would say it's sad it's saddening to see that it took such a while for this law to come into the eyes of the supreme court and some amendments to come in but also a good step that we are seeing some amendments come in you know even if they are smaller steps it's step in the right direction so so definitely yes next question is to parimala ji um regarding the law of adoption and guardianship as you mentioned um so my question is that what are the factors which are paramount while these laws are interpreted by the judiciary to make them gender neutral specifically in the light of challenges to constitution validity um to few of the provisions like the section 6 of the hindu minority and the guardianship act the paramount consideration as i mentioned earlier is the welfare of the child 
and that is what supreme court is keeping in mind hmm. secondly the equality which has been asserted time and again between man and woman so law has actually looked at it in terms of rights as well as in terms of responsibility when i refer to the subjects uh, other experts are dealing with here whether it be succession or maintenance or adoption and guardianship or even the uh, all the laws were in family court uh, act deals with everywhere now means women have been equally made responsible to take care of parents pay maintenance even if husband is not earning the wife has to pay him maintenance correct to so this extent the court has gone so when it comes to property rights when it comes to adoption when it comes to guardianship why means when it comes to asserting their rights why should they be on the second pedestal so there are two very important aspects which judiciary is looking at one is of course these both these laws are totally based on this fundamental principle of upholding welfare of the minor hmm. secondly the equality in terms of both rights and responsibilities rather if you look at the social structure today though women have been given equality in terms of earning doing so many things which otherwise men used to do buying grocery going attending schools it was all the men used to do or even you know entire marketing or taking care of finances nowadays it all has come to women and she is doing her household duties as well so no duty is lessened and all the duties which are of men have been added Correct. right so it's actually double the duty women are doing in the same hours of the day right and with the same approach towards them of the society at least law should treat them mm-hmm. equally and when we talk about equality the constitution says not only equality but equal equality in equal circumstances yeah. right one is if suppose both the people have to reach the same destination but the starting point is different hmm. or the hurdles in between are different then equal opportunity is not there yeah so therefore this widened concept has to be looked at wherein the circumstances for the women have to be created wherein they will be shouldering same responsibility with same rights in the same social structure today the social structure is different for them after coming home man can still sit and order the coffee to be made for him this is going to very fundamental thing but women immediately rush to the washroom get fresh and before the gas or kitchen exactly. into the kitchen so that difference is not going right so that element of you know somewhere being treated as a lesser human being or you know dutiful being dutiful always towards the men this concept has to go until that i am speaking about equality is just a misnomer right but at least when the laws assert it maybe the social structure will gradually change so that is the approach especially while asserting rights towards the child so also uh, you see now this kara uh, has come up which is a central authority for uh, you know giving the child in adoption so it is a centralized system now the adoption Uh, there is the, the uh, you know the perspective about it or the approach towards it of the society also has to change and a very good change at the thought level has to be tried to be brought by this bringing in kara where you can see only only get an option of three children you have to select from them children are not treated as chattels you know you go on this organization then you don't see a child uh, uh so which suits you then you go another organization like bride searching or 
for bride groom searching the child searching used to be there so that aspect has been addressed now clearly this kara has uh, uh, you know set a very clear process which is free of hassles which is very much you know uh, guided properly followed and it 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 takes care of so many emotional and social aspects by making uh, those out of all this and uh, that reduces the commercial angle also which was earlier involved in you know all such uh, uh, processes maybe if it is an institution you give hum lump sum donation to them or if it is a family within the family adoption is happening there used to be a economical arrangement behind it so all these aspects can be taken care of uh, with the government or the a uh, judiciary has uh, tried its level best to bring in all these novel things so that is a very good change and the time limit has also come wherein you know the people need not wait for 4 5 years now for adoption to happen so it happens in a time bound fashion and uh, there are not too much choices which you are given so within those specific choices you have to choose the counseling has been brought in mm. the poster care time is given to the people wherein parent child matching is done so all this process which has been brought in by this kara and well regulated that is, that has uh, you know helped people who actually want to go for adoption see that child brings joy to the parenting you no know, it is actually very fundamental to the marriage institution itself right so uh, the concept that the you are helping the society by adopting a child maybe you are helping the child itself when you bring in home and you give him the better but it is uh, it should be also like you know you should be grateful to that child that it comes in your life mm-hmm. and makes your life beautiful yeah. right so the procedure has to have that feel good factor for both so nowhere those concepts that somebody is doing some favor to the society or obliging the child that you know we are doing something good or economic factor right. these things shouldn't be there and when you know the law moves from those kind of social uh, uh, thought processes to this kind of clear processes so these you know uh, stereotype thoughts also get addressed and get eliminated from the society so which is a very good change which happened further the man and women they both are equally capable in today's era they both have equal uh, you know the mental capacity which is there and therefore when a person wants to take care of somebody by bringing them in their life so again the law has traveled you know its own course in re- acknowledging a single woman's uh, right to adopt a single man's right to adopt as well mm. right uh, though there are certain restriction they like a man cannot adopt a girl child see in the welfare that is some few exceptions to the equality also have to be there in the larger interest of the right. very uh, you know natural facts which are there so the law will always take care of those hmm. but when judiciary will look at it it will again look at the circumstances in which a particular thing is happening right so and maybe then the adoption or the guardianship can happen in those terms so also in india the very deep rooted very important thing is religion caste right like uh, hindu law has been acknowledging the concept of adoption you know for ages right since the beginning of uh, probably the hindu civilization adoption has been recognized correct especially because you know it had a religious or you know mythological reason that uh, you cannot die without getting inherited especially mm-hmm. father's name has to perpetuate, perpetuate your family has to perpetuate so son has to be there in the family 
that was the concept because of which hindu law always acknowledged the adoption okay, because your pyre last rites have to be performed by a son and then only you reach the moksha or the heaven that was the concept yeah. secondly the economic uh, factor was also there if you die women cannot girls cannot inherit the property property will go to somebody else hmm. that was another reason why sons were allowed to adopt and women girls were not getting adopted hmm. right so from there the law traveled wherein women or girls could be adopted later Uh, so the from there uh, from ages the concepts have changed and it has got more emotional uh, content to it uh, emotional meaning to it wherein it is more for fulfillment of your desire to have that joy in your life which mm-hmm. the child brings the learning it brings uh, with it so that has become more important and judiciary looks at all these aspects when it looks at uh, you know deciding such matters so uh, like uh, muslims jews parsis christians they did not recognize adoption rather they still don't recognize it and then they can go into guardianship they can take the ch- child into their guardianship hmm. so therefore this minority and guardianship act which is uh, uh, a law for hindus and there is a guardian and wards act of 1890 which is there or this juvenile act justice act also provides for you know such guardianships which can be taken so uh, not only that the minor can be taken even an adult who is incapacitated for them also guardian can be appointed so religious factors uh, caste factors those are also not recognized when uh, you know these these laws are now interpreted so supreme court has said that all these laws have become secular now not uh, not remained religious so that connotation has gone now and the law has progressed from there to here so anybody can adopt any really the religion of the child doesn't matter so this is a very good trend again as i said certain things uh, need uh, uh, you know the changes like uh, economic uh, uh, aspects which are there and once those come in because i as i said all these are connected your maintenance your domestic violence law uh, your succession act right so when changes happen there automatically the these rights of uh, you know parenting uh, will also be equated right because women get empowered to that extent and if they show that readiness to do it automatically it will come No, so and we cannot wait for that thing to happen because the law itself is a medium of change so why not assert that in law itself right and therefore these changes uh, have to happen the law needs to be amended to that extent which movement is continuously going on women forums are taking it up very stro- strongly and i hope for good times to better <laughs> thank you Thank you thank you very much Ji